Ooh, it's a beaver right there. I don't know why these beavers are so shy. It was right there. Ah, this place is usually pretty reliable uh, to get birds in flight. I've caught osprey and eagles and all different kinds of ducks. And then of course there's woodpeckers and, and Canadian geese and crows. But I'm going to show you today basically what this lens and this camera can do together. Hopefully if, there, if we catch anything, it's like the Dead Sea out here today. There's a couple of geese over here. I mean the lighting's behind them, which is not ideal. We'll just take a couple of shots to get warmed up. So I have all my settings already set up, saved into custom mode 3. Let me get up a little higher. And it's interesting how it chooses one. Uh oh, geese flying. Get my shutter speed up. Good. <laughs> oh, it's a red wing right here. I need to move over just a bit. All right. far away. Alright, I might have got one. Not bad. Bald eagle. Holy crap. Nice one. <laughs> I hope I got it. Let's see.
Well, I hope you enjoyed those pictures as much as I enjoyed taking them. I mean, I've had a lot of fun the last few days going out and shooting birds in flight and all kinds of other critters. But uh, what I want to do is talk a little bit about this camera and lens combination, uh, some optimal settings, I think, for this lens, and also the settings uh, for shooting birds in flight in the new Olympus OM-1. All right, let's talk about this camera and lens combination. This is the Olympus 75 to 300 millimeter version 2. Uh, it's an f4.8 to 6.7. And that basically means you need to be in pretty good light, right? Because the aperture is a little bit high. And I consider this basically a kit lens. Now, it has a really good reach out to 300 millimeters. And on micro four thirds, that's a 600 millimeter equivalent. So you get a ton of reach. Now, in terms of autofocus, this lens is pretty fast and it's very smooth. Um, I have no problem shooting at 10 frames per second. I haven't honestly tried at 15 or 20 frames per second, uh, but I can tell you at 10 frames per second, I'm not having any problems. I have a very good hit rate. And uh, the other thing is in terms of sharpness, this lens is really pretty sharp up to about 150 millimeters. Once you get over 150, it does start to soften up all the way at the 300 where it's at its softest. Uh, not to say that it's horrible, okay? But it's not great, <laughs> to be honest. But you need to stop the lens down to f8 once you get over 150 millimeters. And then you'll get the most out of this lens. And still get some pretty decent images. It's only when the subjects get really far away and they're very small in the frame there's really not a lot of hope. And if you're not if you're not in good light and you're shooting at high ISO with this lens, you know, 1600, 3200, 6400, you combine high ISO noise and grain with a soft lens at 300 millimeters, it's a train wreck, all right? I mean, you might get some, recover something out of it with DxO and all of the other AI noise reduction. Uh, but generally speaking, this is not a lens for shooting at night, okay? You need to be in very, very good light. Uh, but that said, it's lightweight and compact. It only extends out, you know, maybe another 40% uh, from its uh, original size, so it packs up nicely. Also, I use a, a, a generic metal lens hood. It's a 58 millimeter threaded metal lens hood. And I'll have links down below for all this stuff. If you want to get one for yours, if you don't, if you already have the lens, and it just screws on the front, and it really helps reduce flaring and gives you a little better contrast as well. And obviously, it protects the the front element. I don't have a scratch on this front element. Just look at the size of that lens hood, right? <laughs> okay, now, now let's talk about the settings in the camera, and I'm going to generalize here a little bit. But I will do a video or a full menu walkthrough on birds and flight settings for this camera specifically. But generally speaking, you want to do these things. One is you want to make sure your shutter speed is between 1 2,000th or 1 5,000th of a second. You can go a little faster, 1 8,000th and faster. The faster the better, generally speaking. But uh, between 1 2,000th and 1 5,000th are probably all the shutter speeds you'll be using. Uh, if it's a larger bird, one two thousandth of a second is good, like hawks and eagles and blue herons. Uh, you'll be able to freeze and not get motion blur. And you might get a little bit on the wingtips if they're really flapping their wings fast. But generally, one two thousandth is fast enough for larger birds. But the smaller the bar bird gets, the faster you want your shutter speed. So one three thousandth, one five thousandth, especially those like little swallows and 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 uh, chickadees and things. They're always twitching and things like that. <laughs> you know, faster shutter speed is better. Um, and hummingbirds, obviously, one five thousandth to one ten thousandth is ideal for those. Uh, but you get the idea. And then we've already talked about aperture, but for this lens, you want to set the aperture to f eight to get the most out of it. Uh, if you have pro lenses and things like that, you know, you could probably use f4 or f2.8. But with this lens, f8 will give you the sharpest image possible. And then to get the most detail, you want to keep your ISO as low as possible. So use auto ISO and you can set the range between 200 and 6400 or higher if you want. But if you're if you're having to raise your ISO much above 6400, you're really not getting enough light, okay? 
and your images are not going to come out great because when you combine high iso noise and grain with a lens that isn't super sharp uh trust me it's a train wreck and i know dxo and topaz and all these other ai noise reduction softwares do a great job and i've seen really good results but generally speaking the lower your iso the better and that's true really for any kind of photography right so uh, i found you know the lower the better always and um you also want to set your image quality settings in the camera to LSF plus RAW. So large, super fine, plus RAW. That'll give you the maximum quality JPEG if you're a JPEG shooter. And it'll also give you the option to process your RAW images. Now, if you're like me and you always process your birds uh, in flight images, uh, because usually they're high ISO and you have to do some processing on your own, uh, you know, you can do RAW only. That's fine. And that's really it in terms of the exposure and quality settings. Now let's talk about the autofocus. You want to set the autofocus to C-AF or continuous autofocus. There's other options there like continuous autofocus plus tracking. There's single autofocus, etc. Make sure you're in continuous autofocus. And you also want to make sure you select all of the target points in the autofocus uh, settings. Because you have other options for like a 3x3 three three grid, small, medium, large, uh, crosshairs. You got all kinds of different focusing points that you can choose from. You want to make sure you select all. Now that didn't used to be the case, but the OM1 now has subject detect. And with subject detect, you can tell the camera to look for birds. That's one of the subjects it can detect. And it's going to look through the entire frame for that bird if you have all the focus points set if you only have a single point or nine box grid it's really only going to look for that bird in the center frame it may see it in the other uh, parts of the frame but it's going to look in the center first um, for that bird and try to focus in that area only so make sure you have everything everything selected all focus points uh, so that's a little bit different from previous uh, omd cameras and last but not least is your shutter mode. You want to be shooting in silent sequential. Uh, now I know there's a lot of other choices there like silent sequential high like SH1, SH2, Pro Capture. And I'll talk about those in another video. Uh, but to get started, shoot in silent sequential. And then you also want to go into the menu and change your sequential settings for silent sequential to 10 frames per second down from 20 frames per second, which is the default. And I do this really for two reasons. One is I don't think the autofocus motors in the uh, 75 to 300 are going to be able to keep up at 15 or 20 frames per second. Uh, so you're just going to get a lot of autofocus shots. It's going to be very frustrating. Two, and this is really the main reason I do it, it gives me the maximum time at the 10 frames per second that I can shoot, say, in a single burst. Because this camera has a 90 frame buffer. So if I hold the shutter button down at 10 frames per second, I can hold it down for up to nine seconds before the camera starts to slow down and buffer down to one or two frames per second. Uh, now, usually you'll be shooting, you know, two, three second bursts anyway, but having that extra room or buffer, so to speak, for nine seconds can come in really handy because sometimes the birds, you know, Start doing some crazy things and you want to catch that moment and not have to start buffering and miss it let's see i talked about that. i think that's it those are the general settings like i said i'll i'll do a full walkthrough of some other things we can tweak the rest of the settings are are pretty okay we can tweak those a little bit in a future video but either way um i hope you like these kind of videos and if so you know maybe consider making a small donation i'll have links down below to my paypal and buy me a coffee but either way consider subscribing hit the like button i appreciate you watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon